Okay, my wonderful friends, Roger once again talking about accelerating light. And this was an experiment they did at Harvard not, not too long ago. And what they're using is pulsed lasers, the same things we're using. And they, I, I don't think they realized what they did. They used this graphene separator here and shooting electrons, what they thought were electrons. Um, using lasers to try to separate the lighter. I'm not exactly sure even what they use these for because they don't need them. Now, what they, this ended up being what I call a Venturi. And we had a different style Venturi, but I'm sure they created one very similar because they, they get an exact same effect. And they call it the single electron timeline. So they have separated the particles and they think they have one electron and it lasted six nanoseconds and here's the interaction and that's the venturi and it, 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 at one point or another coming in or out i'm not sure what they did here whether this is coming in and that's coming out this is my cursor so the um but the the, the key is is that the center impact at the venturi creates this enormous electron shower coming in it's no big deal as it approaches the venturi it starts to concuss and create energy at the venturi explosion then it slows back down then it turns back down into nothing again and it, that only lasts for six nanoseconds now that's uh, that's harvard and um I will show you ours. It's virtually the same thing. We have a Venturi, and we created the same particles, and they lasted only a few nanoseconds. Now, this also is Harvard. I believe the yeah, this this is Harvard again, and these are what they call new states of matter, and they're showing what the energy value is and how it's achieved and this is the spins and so forth and these are what they're seeing as the energy values as they spin and i'm going to show you what we could i could show you the exact same things i will show you right now okay this is basically the circular pattern of the first one and then i'm going to show it as it spins we're going to use the red laser all right, they're showing the particles spinning they're here and then here and then here and then here. Originally, it's just one, but once you bring it through the Venturi, it separates it out and they can see it in these different impact zones. And this is nothing more than a drill bit. It's a spinning light particle, and, that's, and they show it as a spinning particle. Well, I'll show you some more spinning ones. Okay, these are literally light particles. Those are those, I don't know if I showed you yet, but they're boxes of particles that concuss as they come through the Venturi. Now, they're spinning and creating fields surrounding them because they're magnetic particles, and as they come around in a circular pattern, they push everybody else out and they create a lot of energy. Well, a couple of these fields compacted to force one of the other red fields to go into blue, which is an extremely excited state of light, which is characterized by that long extension right there. Now, these are flatter, you see them? There's still a particle in here, and there's still a particle in here too, but it's going so fast now that it's, it's bullet-shaped because it, it was crushed. It had nowhere to go, just like the, the, the Venturi that we put them in the first place. Then it's automatically, immediately coming back down to its... I'm sure it would, but this is the last shot we have it, but I'm sure it would end up being back to this. Now, that's kind of interesting how it remembers its own energy value because the, the, the red ones just turn back into regular non-concussive particles. They don't go through this blue and, you know, uh, they don't go through any other phases of color change that I know of. You know, and that needs to be looked at. Do they, when they degrade, do the, do the colors change? I don't think so. But maybe, maybe blue ch changes to green and then down to red. But red is the bottom color, so maybe it can't degrade. Something to look into, because I never, I haven't seen a green degrade. And the blue, I haven't seen that degrade either. See, that's blue. I can see it slowing down but it's not changing color. 
This one here was also a shocker. I believe that's a, a reverse spinning particle, and it, it, it's, uh, I don't know what it's doing. It's changed into a half a Higgs and a half a whatever that is. The green doesn't change. It comes through green. It stays green even when it, like, it seems to do a double impact. Whether it's hitting and emitting, I don't know. But something's happening in between this crash and that crash. What that's all about, I'm not 100% sure at this point. But these are the same particles, and they don't change colors like that purple changed from the red or changed into the blue and then back, it looks to me. Now, I don't see these turning down to red. Okay, the key with Harvard is they don't, they never knew about this black particle. The black particle is attached to the electron. They're seeing the electron, I agree. And the electron, let's say it does last, you know, four nanoseconds, whatever that re represents in the time frame of light. But at the, and then it re returns back to its non energetic state as it reattaches to those black balls. They don't know that the black balls exist, they just think the white is there. It's not. All right, these are more electrons, only these are green ones, extremely explosive when they approach the Venturi. Same particle, though, as far as I can determine, they're the same particle. I don't think, I think the particles are identical. It's strictly the energetic spin value of them. And they may go faster, I don't know, because I can see that there's a total difference in energy. There's no question there. All right, I said there's a total difference in energy. This is the red and the green coming through the... the Venturi at the same time. Look what happens with the green. Look at how extremely explosively white that is versus how basically dull that is. Also, the particles have such non-energy that they are being actually diverted away, pushed away from their particle stream into oblivion, really. <laughs> the green is taken over. Now, the green is, had to plow through this interference of the red, which, which forced it to concuss here earlier than it would have normally. You see that way I back up? As far as I can determine, that's what I'm seeing. The green would not have, would not have concussed in this region right here had it not been for the red. You know, I really can't say that because they do concuss with all of the particles in front of them. But then, for some reason, they no longer concuss until they hit way out here. So I got to think about that one because I just realized that now. <laughs> Why do they concuss here and not just continue to glow? And then they look like they're just starting to be emitted over here. But we know they already, this is where the Venturi is. They're not being emitted for any well, so it appears that these are secondary driven particles from these particles. That's all I can take from that. At this point, that's all I can take from that, that these have emitted new particles. They still are in the green range, though, which is kind of interesting. A little thinking to do on that, but here they are, they're the same particles. And they come flying through, and sometimes the white is on that side, sometimes the white is on this side, it doesn't pass. That's the spin. But they all seem to be straight up and down, and I believe that's due to the polarity of the Earth. It would be interesting to see if we could change their, the skew, in other words, skew them a little bit with an intense magnetic field that would override the Earth's magnetic field that would sort of pull them straight down. And we, it may even pulse them, pulse them and, and pulse and pulse and pulse and see, do they go straight and then they go this way? Do they go straight and they go that way? If, that, if that's the case, well, it's the magnetic field of the Earth that's creating the up and down spin, because that's what they call up and down spin, which would mean the black is at the top and the white is at the bottom, or the white is at the bottom and the black is at the top, because these are two electrons together. A photon is two electrons together in my world. And, and they're, they're just nothing more than bar magnets. And it, the, the, the white wants to get pulled to the Earth because the Earth is dominated by black particles and the black is the puller. And all masses 
are dominated by black particles. They, they override the white particles. And they are always going to be attractive. So they are all masses will attract other particles. It's just the nature. There's more black than there is white. The black, or there's just, a, the, well, I, I'm almost certain now, there's more black than there is white. And that's what they say, it's dark matter. And it's the attractive gravitational black hole stuff. And I, I agree with that. And I agree with this more than there is the white. But it's attached to every white particle there is, has a black particle attached to it. Unless you can do what we did with the Venturi and literally separate the black from the white. And I, I, I'm going to show you again. All right, and this is the particle accelerator, crusher, whatever you want to call it, and the black particles that were attached, they were, you know, a little box of black and white particles, and they separated the black from the white. It's, and, and that's exactly what CERN and um, Fermi Lab and all of them want to see is the black particle, which is they're going to call a muon, and I also call that dark matter because it has no emission, no absorption, it's 100% gravity, and it wants to just grab back to these white ones as quick as it can at, let's say, 4 or 6 nanoseconds after separation. And they call that the free electron zone. Well, I call that the free electron zone as well. <laughs> but they didn't realize about the reason it slows back down and becomes back to a normal particle is because it's becoming reattached. So the free electron zone puts it back into the attached electron zone. And what, what is attached to? A muon. What is the muon? The black particle. And what is the black particle? Gravity. And there is a excessive black particles. They got out of the way here. They didn't jump over there and reattach, and there was no extra black ones here. There's a ton of extra black ones here. There's a ton of black ones everywhere. And they just get out of the way when there's extreme interactions. And then there's a bunch of waiting around to just jump onto them. That's why you have gravity. That's why masses become attractive. And they get more and more and more attractive the more and more and more mass you get because they're more and more and more mass gives you more and more and more dark versus white.